All right, welcome everyone. This is the Viper Professional Training and Sport Webinar. Today's date is November 22nd, 2016. This is a Tuesday night webinar, <clears throat> and the title of tonight's webinar is Stair Step Trading on the Right Side of the Trend. And as everyone knows has been to our webinars or our live trading room, everything that we say and do at Viper Trading Systems is for educational purposes only. Futures trading, Forex trading, any kind of financial instruments trading involves risk. Therefore, there's always risk of loss. You should only trade discretionary capital, and that is money that you can afford to lose. Nothing said in this webinar. Other webinars we might have, our live trading room or anything else with Viper Trading Systems should never be construed as trading or investment advice. And as always, everyone does trade at their own sole discretion. Any questions on the disclaimer? If not, we are going to get started. All right, sounds good. Bear, bear with me a second. We're going to get started here. I'm going to show you a little bit on a chart here so everybody can get on the right side of the trends and everything because, you know, it, it's pretty important. Don't don't just go get whipsawed around at the open, you know, thinking it's going to go up and then it goes back to down and all that kind of stuff, okay? Let, let's try to stay on the right side of the trend. And that's pretty important. Now, I went ahead and mocked up this chart real quick just to show you um, what I was going to show you mainly. Of course, I think everybody that's in here knows that the uh, dynamic trend, which has the mid band in it, starts out with line zero and then line one, line two, line three, line four, line five, line six, line seven, and line eight. Okay? And that's basically from top to bottom like so, is right at 48 ticks, okay? So in that 48 ticks, we're looking for some really good trades. Wow, that changed. Didn't want that color. Wanted this one. There we go. All right. So this little area right here is from 0 to 8 is 48 ticks. And what you're looking at, <clears throat> you're looking at these retracements to stay on the right side of the trend. If you see anything to do with the blue color, which means it's the high for the day, high for the session, or the lime color, let me see if I can find the lime color here. Hopefully I've got far enough on my data. There we go. See the lime color right here? That was actually just trending up at that time, but when it turns blue, it was really heading up. Okay? Now, when you go <clears throat> through the rest of it, notice that when you get to this yellow color that basically you're going a little bit sideways and then they start breaking the other direction. Okay? So what you want to get yourself in the habit of, unless you're really good at scalping, is to not ignore that mid-band, the color and everything, except at the opens. Okay, the opens and news events, we don't really care that much, but we're going to, we're going to miss a trade here and there, obviously, if we go against the trend, even in that particular case, okay? So, but what I want everybody to do is when, when you've got, you know, the blue mid-band or the, the kind of the lime-colored one or the yellow one, you can pretty much trade either side, okay, because it's, it's sideways. Then you go to a magenta color, which is just simply a downtrend, and then your red color is the um, session low. Okay, once it hits the session low uh, for the day, then this will turn red, and it'll stay red until that changes. And then it goes to the rose color, or, you know, um, usually as a rule it'll go to rose because it's going to go sideways before it goes back up. Okay, and then when it's up, you're looking for longs, right? And when it goes down again, see how that flattens out for a long time? It'll usually make the difference of where things go from there. See how you started heading down? Okay. And if you stay on the right side of this thing, for instance, on the predictors, you know, if you've got a red mid-band, you're going to have a white predictor and a magenta predictor. If you've got it on this one here, you're going to have a green predictor and a blue one. Okay. So, yeah, red always means session low, Mary, on your question, and the blue always means session high, okay? So, you know, a lot of times once you get a session high, that can be, 
you know, a high from a, a previous day, for instance, and then they'll just crater it after that. And then sometimes, of course, they go like crazy. See, like over here, to give an example. Now, see, even when you go sideways on this mid-band for a long time, doesn't mean it's going to break down. See how that one stair-stepped up and just kept going? And, of course, if you looked at the actual prices, you'll see that you had higher lows and higher highs on Lightning 3. Okay? So I want everybody to remember that, okay? That way, when you get into these situations like this, without even seeing prices on this chart, what am I looking for? I'm looking for a retrace short, right? Because I've got a red session low, okay? And let's look at the actual chart, and let's just see if we can get a trade. Okay, I'm going to show you the chart. And I'm going to ask everybody in the room, first off, where would you think the trade would be on this chart? What says the team? What do you think? I see some 4790s coming in and also... 47.97, okay, let's draw a line. Let me change this to deep blue. That's a little light for you. I like navy. All right, right there would be a kiss trade, right? And right here is mid-band. And we also know by looking at the chart, thrust, retrace, thrust, retrace, thrust, that this is our identified swing, right? So even in my mind, if I draw these lines, if it breaks this one, we're not heading down anymore, okay? But anywhere in between this even, like let's say that if it goes above mid-band and rolls over, okay, that could still be a short because you're still getting lower highs, lower lows, right? Okay, now last year we added a new indicator to the object trader lineup called the predictor. Okay, and the predictor will give you some really good ideas of where that next trade will be also. Okay, now what color is the predictor going to be? Just, just after what I just said, uh, you know, when we first started this webinar. See how it's green here and blue here? That's because this was... Still looking at the long side at the time. It's going to be white, isn't it? And it's going to be a magenta color at the bottom. Okay? So let's go ahead and see if we can get a trade based on exactly what I'm teaching here. Now, this is teaching this stair-step method. Looky there. Predictor saying 91. Okay? Now... I've got a wick there and I've got a body, so let's just see if we can get this. And we'll just simply go for a scalp just to try it out. Just to see, here we go. See it right there at 91? All right. Now, what if this was to actually head up, which it's doing a little bit right now, right? Okay. Now, I've got support right in through here if you want to just scalp this thing. See here? right there where that sport was, and there's a $130 trade, okay? Now, let me ask you a quick question now. Let's slow this down for a second. What's happening as we speak right now? Because I called this trade in the room this morning. I think everybody will remember it. Everybody remember it? Well, you've got a low here, a high here, and so far you've got a higher low, but we don't know if this is going to take the swing out and it would change stair-stepping, wouldn't it? High, low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, higher low, if it takes the swing out. Okay, let's watch it. And I'll show you why I called that trade in the room this morning. And you'll be actually able to do the exact same thing. Now, remember at the open... We're not caring as much because this is actually the open of the market, okay? Now, watch this in real time. What did this do just now? It basically gave a little yellow bar type probe, didn't it? Now, we haven't opened the room yet, okay? So, you know, nobody's in this trade or anything. But isn't this actually telling you that more than likely this is very possibly going to head up instead of down? Okay? Now, let's look and see why. 
stair stepping down, right? Now what's it doing? It's trying to stair step up. Now we don't have enough information just yet to take this trade long, do we? So what would this have to do to actually take it long? Anybody? It would have to thrust up and retrace, right? Now does that mean that I couldn't have taken a quick scalp and probably gotten an easy five or six ticks even at this mid band right here? But be very careful when you see this action right here, because I watch for this all the time. You got a low, you got a much lower low by a good 10 ticks. That pretty much tells you that, you know, they could still be heading down, right? Then you get this low here and a huge move up, almost like they tried to break up. And then you get this little bitty takeout. That's, that's that double bottom, isn't it? But where I called this trade this morning was, we open the room at 7.55. Now, now watch it in real time and see if you can't see the same trade that I talked about. Because there, there was a few that had some questions on why it was called long when the background was still red. But watch why it was done. What, what do we talk about all the time in the room? Okay, let's say, for instance, you break. You got a low, a high, a higher low, higher high so far. All right, if they break up above mid-band and pull back and kiss, wouldn't that be considered very possibly a, a decent long? Now, remember, we're still not open yet. The room opens in one minute. Okay, remember, we, we actually opened the room at 7.55. So this trade wasn't called or anything like that, right? Because you could have gotten a quick scalp. I drew the line right where you could have gotten it. Okay, right at uh, mid-band that was, remember? All right, so let's see if we can figure out how we can get in this trade. You got a low, a high, a higher low, higher high. Now, what is it actually trying to do now? It's breaking even a little bit more, isn't it? Okay, so I would be looking for a trade after it thrusts up. Now, you could have taken it already, by the way, because it did break above a low, a high, a higher low, higher high, and it actually broke above the swing. Okay. But where's your trade most likely going to be on this chart? And I'm going to pause this so that everybody, and you know this was called live, so this is, this is replay, but what the webinars are for is to teach how to see this in real time. Because in the room, you, you heard it called this morning, if you were in the room on oil trade. And you know that this trade was called when it came right back down on top of right here, see where your little line is. You got bodies right along in here. More than likely it's going to go all the way to 97, but I usually draw a line like that. And in my head, I also watch for this swing right here. And then I'm ready to take that trade. Okay, especially now, now you think, well, wait a minute. Couldn't this just be a blue bar probe, a deep probe? Well, it could be, but keep in mind that, that this is not trending down anymore. You're getting a low, a high, a higher low. You're stair-stepping, aren't you? You know, even though this hadn't changed yet, you're still stair-stepping. Okay, so let's, let's see if we can get the trade. Anybody? Tell me when to pull it. Anybody? You want to buy it yet? Or you want it to go a little lower? See, it hadn't hit my line yet, but it missed it by one tick is all, didn't it? Okay. Let's see if we can get it. Th this was called right here at this line this morning in the room. And a lot of times when you just take this first bar up when you haven't had an ABC, you're going to get faked. Because usually what happens is you get a, a thrust, a little retrace, and another tiny thrust, even if it's going to hit my line here. Okay, the ABC is pretty good to look for, by the way, because you can see that they they do these little stair steps. So it's going to do a little thrust, a little retrace. If we take this out, then I miss the trade. But this was called live in the room, but it hasn't come down to where it broke out. It broke out right here at 98. See the little stair step? like that. 
Well, let's see if we get it. Now, could you have actually already gone at least like one contract when it was down here? Yes, because when it comes within a tick of that, that's probably not a bad spot to actually fire it. But I wouldn't go crazy on it. They usually give you a second chance. That's absolutely right, Mark. The, the one thing that you'll notice in trading is that as a rule, you know, when they top, they'll give you that second chance. When they bottom, they'll give you that second chance. Okay, let's see if we can get a little bit lower. And you can always pop a fib on it too. See, 38 percent's right down here. Just a little lower. But does it necessarily mean it's going to go to mid band? Not necessarily, but if it goes right down there, I will take it. Does everybody think? You want to take if it does? And you've always got to look to the left to trade the right too. When you're trading like this, do you remember some lines that I drew on the chart this morning in the room? And why they were drawn? It's because we're looking for certain areas to hit our head and pullbacks. Okay, and the best ones to look for are these swings that are identified. See the swing right here? I had that line drawn at 20. Does everybody remember that? What do you think? That came down to that line again, and, and it wicked it. Could come a little lower, right? See how it just wicked exactly my line now? Now, there's times, by the way, that you can actually even, well, let's say, for instance, that we get another thrust up, and you want to add to the trade instead. Does anybody know by looking at the stair-stepping where it would be? Oh, wow, what my, I moved my stop accidentally instead. All right, so we got us a trade, right? We got about $330, but unfortunately, that didn't. I'm going to go it again. Long bar, simply because I expect a higher low. If we're going to continue heading up, that is. But let me ask a, a quick question for everybody on the team. Where would I want to add to this trade if, uh, let's say, for instance, that I put my target way out of the way, okay? We know we've got a target at 20 because we can look to the left. See that swing, right? So we could definitely protect ourselves at 20, right? Absolutely, right? Or look to the left to trade the right. Let's see, we have a swing right under here at 12. And let's look to the left and see what else we've got. Yeah, 12 and 13 and 20, really, right? All right, now, real quick, I'm in the money and, and doing pretty decently. Where would I put my stop on this? Anybody? Lightning, right? Where is lightning on this chart? Thrust, retrace, thrust. That's lightning right there, and it's identified because it, well, it just now closed above it. So that is your lightning swing, right? So raise that like that, exit on close. Okay? Now what if I saw this trade and I thought, you know what? I think I want to get in some more of this. Let's say, for instance, that I just take all my coin but one just under 20. Okay, but I'll leave a runner going. Where, where do you think the next trade is on this chart by just looking at the the swings, watch, watch and see if it won't do just what we're talking about. I'm going to go ahead and draw lightning one. Okay, so we've got a little swing right across here, right, at 08. Like that. So let me ask you a question on that. Would that be a pretty decent little area to actually more than likely add? I would not let it go any lower than this. That's your lightning swing, right? And you've got another lightning swing right over here. And it's just now bouncing off of it. That's not enough for me to actually add something to it yet. 
But let's see if we can get down close to this O2 and then get a bounce. And watch your stealth line too. Now we're still in two, so you might not want to add very possibly. But let's just do it. Let's just see if we can get, get some extra on this. I'm looking for it to come down not as low as this with a higher low. Okay, because for this to head up, what's our definition of stair stepping? Thrust, retrace, thrust, retrace, right? Hadn't drawn it yet. Okay, let's see if we can get something. Just see if we can get something. Now remember, we had our stop here in the room this morning. Remember that? Wow, this was slow. Remember, I remember how slow it was. I'll kick it up to about five times. Maybe we can get it. Got to get an ABC. Nah, it bounced off a of seven. I wanted a little lower. There we go. See it right there? It's a higher low. If it doesn't take out our stop. If that bar closed down, we'd never get this trade to begin with. We just added two contracts to it. Probably put your stop just right under there, right? See how to do that? It's a pretty good way to trade, by the way. Now, watch your lightning. And I'm going to teach you something tonight, too, that, that sometimes I don't even do myself because I'm watching the charts for everyone else. But watch that power meter. And if that power meter actually goes red, can we close the trade? See if we can get it. Now, right now, you got a high, you got a low, you got a little lower high. If they close below this, we're going to get lightning down. Hadn't done it. We're fine. Now you'd have to close below here to get lightning down, right? And watch the power meter just went red. See there, we just saved ourselves a bunch of money rather than waiting on the lightning swing all the way down here. Because remember, they go stair-stepping on the left side, and then they go stair-stepping on the right side. Okay, this is the right side. You got a high, you got a low, you got a wick. So this is kind of your little swing that should have held, and it didn't. Okay, now does anybody remember the next trade that we called in the room and why? Let's take lightning off the chart just real quick so I can see this. I'm looking at predictor. Look at that predictor right there. That's also a swing. There's predictor. Right? And let's look. We've got a thrust, retrace, thrust, retrace, thrust. Our secondary swing is right down here. I always like to look at secondary swings also because that gives you that, like that ABC, okay? Let's see if we can get something. Anybody remember this in the room this morning? Now, what color is our mid-band right now? Are we looking for shorts anymore? No, we're actually looking for longs, right? Thrust, retrace, thrust, retrace, thrust, retrace. It has not checked that swing right there, right? Okay, it's going a little lower. It can't take this one out. That's our secondary swing, or we're not going to be heading up. Okay, anybody remember this trade? Now, keep in mind, you can box this in, too. Okay, I called it on this next bar, if everybody remembers that. Got it on that bar right there, because it was kind of quick. Okay, now what you want to do is you want to get your targets out of the way for just a minute until you can decide where to put them. Okay, I look to the left to trade the right and I see a swing across here. You probably want to protect one there. You probably want to protect one right across here. Okay, so since we've already hit the one, we'll go ahead and do two of them right there. Remember, called that in the room this morning, 12. Now, real quick on this, where would our stop be as soon as this closes above the swing? 
right now it's trying to ratchet up, but it hadn't done it yet. But it did a beautiful mid-band bounce. Everybody remember that? So isn't that your lightning swing right there? Closed above the swing here. Wouldn't you move your stop all the way up there? Now, keep in mind, I've only got one left right now. So obviously, that would be fine, even pulling back that far. Okay? Now, you want to you want to stick with it until lightning just goes red? We can do that. Lightning one, high, low, higher, high, higher, low. Still higher, right? If it closes above here, it'll be higher. That's your new stop, right? Did you know you can also use this uh, particular trail here? This one right here. Swing strength, one, offset. One strength would be simply like this. Hit the control key. All right. And let's see if we can. Actually, it's showing the swing right down here. Let's take the offset off. There it is. Okay. There's our swing right there. So I can actually hard offset this a little bit, like so. And then I can actually engage that trail. And that particular trail, now, well, actually, it looks like it hit our targets. So <laughs> it doesn't matter what we did. We hit our targets. Okay. Now, that looked like a pretty good trade, didn't it? But what if you missed that trade? You've got to be ready for the next one. Okay, so let's see if we can all figure out the next trade together. I'm going to get rid of all this lightning, and I want you all to tell me where the next trade is. We'll get rid of that. Okay, I like to look and see, okay, I had a high over here. It took it out by at least enough ticks, right? So where is my next trade on this chart? I got a medium swing down here. It cannot take it out or we're, gonna, we're not going to be heading up anymore. You got a mid band right here. Okay. That's where I'd be looking for my next trade. Let's see if we can get a predictor to show us where it's at. Okay. Where's predictor showing us right now where our trade would be? Showing right on top of here. So I'm looking for a trade between here and here. Okay. Now keep in mind that we've we already hit our targets, so we can't go chasing this thing. I can guarantee you this. If you go chasing trades, you know, sometimes if, if you just hit the button, let's let's just try it, and I'll, we'll see. But keep in mind your stop would have to be all the way under here, wouldn't it? So is that a smart trade with three contracts? That's $300 loss if they take that 10 ticks. And the answer would be no, right? You have a swing over here at 36. They're just now trying to come up to it. Now, if we get another lightning, we'll be okay on this. But keep in mind that that's not the smart way to trade. If you actually, you know, hit targets or if you get to move targets or something like that, then wait for the retracement. Or if you do jump in, you got to realize you got to put your stop at lightning. That closed above that swing. So that's my lightning swing right there with exit on close. And if it takes me, it takes me. Everybody see that? Let's see if it works. Because the only time you're going to be able to chase a trade is if you've got the, the guts to go ahead and put the stop at the lightning swing. Because if it's stair-stepping, then that lightning swing should hold. Okay? And probably smartest to do it with like one contract. Test the waters. You know, because to give an example, three contracts with 12 tick stops, $360. Now, this trade may work out because oil was pretty much on fire this morning after the market opened, remember? Okay, and we may luck out and actually get close to cost if this will close above the swing, right? But what I was trying to show you there is I just don't recommend thrust trading. It's not a smart way to make money especially if you get in sideways stuff. Now, I want to show you something else, though. We're going to go to 
um, oil, uh, pardon me, uh, we're on oil. We're going to go to YM here in just a second. And I want to show you how to trade that, the little bit more sideways junk, okay? We may be okay on this trade. I'm going to fast forward it and see. Where would our stop be right now? Right there, right? I've only got one left, so we're pretty much okay. Stops us out, it stops us out, right? Okay. Wow. Our predictor is going to be in here somewhere now. See, it didn't come down there. We went ahead and chased it. This is probably going to get us, though. It looks like it's kind of topped at that 36. And by the way, you don't have to let them take 20 ticks back. You can always hit close. Okay. But you'll never get what I call the gusto trades if you do. Because that's a lightning swing. If it takes it, it takes it. Still in, okay. And I'm going to go to break even. That way we at least don't give them a bunch of our money. Because we bought a thrust. Like I said, that's not a smart way to trade. You can make some money doing it, but keep in mind that if you ever take a thrust, you got to look at your lightning swings. you got to have your stop at your lightning swings right off the bat. Okay? Now, looking at this chart, where do you think the next trade on this chart is? Let's, let's draw some lines. Let's just go ahead and kill it. Well, we killed it anyway. All right. Let's, let's look to the left to trade the right. we got a swing at 21. We got a mid band at 17. We got a predictor now at 20. Okay? So I'm thinking that it will bounce between those two lines, don't you? Okay, we've had an A. We haven't had a B. See the thrust? No retrace yet. Didn't come down to predictor. That's pretty risky trade just to jump in. Let's see if we can get, there we go, we're getting a little retrace. Thrust, retrace. So we need an A, B, C. So I expect it to at least take this swing out to be an A, B, C by at least a wick. And by the way, we also called this trade in the room this morning too. Let's take this one the more conservative way you want to. You want to take it a little bit more conservative? We'll take it when this changes to green. <clears throat> the second it changes to green. Lightning's been down so far, right? Now let's see if we can get a little greenness to this thing. What does everybody think? I can tell you when it's going to go green, when it takes that out. Now, I liked it here better, don't you? See, that gives up quite a bit of the trade. That's an aggressive trade. That's close enough to me. It's breaking. Okay. See how that went green? Okay. What did that green mean? Well, it quit going down. So what's it doing now? It's doing the stair step that we talk about actually trading. Now, where is your lightning swing on this chart? Right this very second. Let's go ahead and get our targets out of the way for a second because I like to look to the left and trade swings. There's going to be one of them right there. Be another one right across there. Right? And since we've only got three, um, I'll go ahead and put this one at just under 41 because we want a runner. Everybody see that? Now, isn't that a, a good way to trade that, by the way? Let's see. If you squish the chart, it looks like we should be short. I took shorts when you were taking longs. I worked uh, two that failed. Um, which one was the short? Let, let, me, let me pause it for just a second because I want to Make absolutely clear which direction we're going. You mean when it was over here? When we first opened the room? Uh, 
No, actually, Ed, the line actually turns green based on more of an algorithm than that. Okay? For this to turn green, you've got to have a pretty good thrust. And then you're looking for the pullback into the midband. And by the way, that's an 80 to 85% probability trade. And notice that we not only have the midband, but we have predictors, which will predict these trades also. Remember, we drew this ahead of time. We had these two lines drawn. Why did we have them drawn? Midband and the predictor. So trust the background and stop thinking. Well, actually, to an extent, that's correct. Because let me show you something on. Let's just leave this one on, and we're going to go to YM just real quick. Bear with me a second. Let me get a template on YM real quick. I paused it for just a second. Okay, let's look, let's look for a trade based on the same thing we just talked about here. All right, and I'm going to put Object Trader on the chart. And by the way, I didn't trade YM this morning, but I did call some trades on YM. Let's, let's see if we can take a short. Well, it's already hit up here, right? See that right there? Look to the left to trade the right. Let's see where it hadn't hit yet. It hadn't hit right across here yet. And our predictor hasn't showed up yet. So let's just wait a few minutes and see if we can get a trade. Remember, short the white predictor. So we're looking to short this predictor. Let's speed it up just a little bit and see if we can get a trade. Don't just fall for these little, you know, breakdowns and things like that. You know, if you're Trading longs, you're waiting for retraces down, right, so that you bounce. And you're doing the opposite on a short. Okay? Now, if you were to box this in, let's say that you took the trade right here, for instance. You know, if, if you wanted to try a trade, for instance, that if it broke that line, could you get seven ticks? Possibly. Okay? But that type of trading, to me, is not as smart as trading the range itself. We'll, we'll try it for seven ticks just for the fun of it, if it breaks the line. Touch the line. Not yet. Now this, like I said, this is what I call scalping. And you're scalping against the trend if it breaks that resistance, right? Not yet. All right, let's try to get seven ticks. But isn't the smarter trade the predictor to begin with? Because where does my stop have to be on this trade? It has to be at lightning. Well, right now, lightning's right here. As soon as this closes above here, then your lightning's right here. Everybody see that? Now, isn't that a risky trade to try to get seven ticks? And, well, I'm risking seven to get seven. That's a one-to-one -one risk, and that's not what I call a great way to trade. See there? Just lost uh, four contracts, 280 bucks. See why you don't want to do that? That's those head fake little things that happen even around mid-band. Okay? But watch what trade actually does set up. Okay? Let's watch it. We're not looking to buy the bottoms unless you just simply want to watch and see if you can get a bounce off support. Okay? But you're looking for the predictor, and we're going to get that 280 bucks back. Where's predictor? It's right there, isn't it? See if we can get a trade. It may just go ahead and break down. If it does, it does. I'm going to show you how to trade predictors in this sideways stuff. There we go. That's predictor trade. Everybody see it? Whoop. I'll go ahead and do one more since, obviously, uh, well, too late. We'll do one more if it even closes down, although I would probably wait for it to close back up first. 
Okay, but we got some of that back. What did we do? We waited on predictor. There's the up and then you get your down. Let's go ahead and add just for the fun of it. No, we don't want eight, not eight. Should hit its head here. See it right there? It's already tested up here. Now, if it, if it uh, takes me out, it takes me out, right? And it may change trends. But isn't that a smart way to trade and then look to the bottom? You've got to swing all the way down at the bottom so you can put the bulk of your stuff, let one run, get one down on here to the, to the swings, and, and maybe one at the predictor right there. Okay? See how that works? Yeah, see, see when I did that one against the trend, Mary? I instantaneously gave up 280 bucks. Four contracts times seven ticks, remember? That's why I don't like little breakout trades against the trend. When you're in a range, you know, you're thinking, well, it'll break out of the range and it'll, it'll go up 100 ticks. Well, it may chop around for two and a half hours first. So if you stay with the colors of the predictors, you'll be a lot better off. Now, would your stop be, uh, real quick, just what I've taught tonight so far, thrust, retrace, thrust, where's your stop? Lightning, right across there. Exit on close. Okay? Now, let me ask you a quick question, too, though. What, what if you missed this trade? The ABC uh, prevails on your question. Let's say that you had support down here and you just got a thrust down. Most of the time it'll do an A, B, C, okay? And if you just do these A's only, you know, like, like let's see if I can find one. Um, well, let's watch this trade first, though. Where's our stop going to be? Well, right now it's at lightning, right? This would be too risky to put it just above mid-band. When it closes below these swings, you can put your stop all the way under here. Pretty close. That's good enough to me. It's, it's wicking below it at least. Eh. I don't like wicks only. Let's see if it'll hold. Now, has this been building a shelf for the last little bit? Where do you think the next trade will be on this chart? What, what if you missed this trade entirely? Okay. Always look. When they're stair-stepping, you're looking for KISS trades, right? And I taught those on several webinars where there's like five different types of trades to take. There's the, there we go. We just got our beautiful little target, didn't we? 49, we're, we're below it, right? Now, what if we don't go very much below it? What do you really want to do in a case like this? Watch the power meter, and we'll get out of this on a green. See what it's doing so far? It's thrusting down, right? Now, when they thrust like this hard, I usually go at least to stealth, okay? Maybe even a little bit above stealth. That, that's that line right there, okay? Because when they thrust like that, they don't do the zigzag motion. If that closes above that swing, you got a higher low. So you got a low, a high, a higher low. There you go. Close it out. All right. Now, where's the next trade on this chart? Look to the left to trade the right, and predictor's already painted for you. Predictor paints right there. That's also a swing. That's good enough for me. Okay, so we're going to draw one more line, like so. Anywhere between those two lines, I'm going to fire a trade. Okay, let's see if we can get it. The color of the background and the, and the bands with predictor would take precedence over power meter three. Well, power meter three, um, what you're really going to want to do more than anything, power meter three is going to give you an advanced opportunity to get into a trade a little quicker before the backgrounds change as much, okay? 
But what I'm going to try to show tonight is even without power meters, except for getting out of the trade, like we got out when it power meter went green. Does everybody know why power meter went green just then? You had a thrust retrace thrust. So the moment that bar closed above that swing, see how you had a higher low here? You got a swing right across there. And the second that closed above that swing, that power meter turned green. Okay. And where's our next trade on this chart? Well, it's saying it's all the way up here. Now, what's our rule of thumb? We want a thrust, a little retrace, and a thrust, ABC. Watch and see if we can get it. It tells you it's stepping up. That's exactly right. Uh, see, the whole thing is there are all those trends on your chart. Your power meter is green. If you changed your background to power meter one, which I wouldn't advise, this would be green right now. First time you understand ABC, D? Okay. Uh, we're here to teach. See, so far this is an A, isn't it? There's no little thrust retrace. See, this had an ABC, but it didn't come to a swing. Now, sometimes they'll just come to stealth, and you could have taken it for probably a scalp trade. But the closer they get to that mid-band or a predictor, the better off you are for a good high probability trade. Okay, let's see if we're do doing an ABC. A, we did get a bar down. That's a B. Let's see if we get a C. Let's see, what about the double bottom? How's the difference than the first seal trade? You could actually take that double bottom, absolutely, Doug, on your question, if you wanted to. But I'd highly recommend, you know, for instance, if, if you're going to take this like right here where it's coming down to support and you wanted to do this against the trend, I'd do it like this. Well, we've just missed it. See there? Now, that's risky now because I missed the line. Okay? But I'd probably put my stop right under here because I may have just given away another $240. But, yeah, you're right. You could actually buy it on a stair step up. Because where do we expect it to actually hit its head? It's going to hit its head right there, so we better bring our target down just a little bit. See why on that? Everybody see that? I think we just missed it. We're going to find out here in just a second. I will actually reverse this if that goes to red. If we don't hit our, there we got our target, so we're okay. Hadn't quite gotten our predictor just yet. Doesn't look like it's going to. So we've got a double top, basically. Power meter turns red. I'll go ahead and do this. Hopefully we get a bar up first. No, nope, too late. Everybody see that? Came within a tick of my line. See why you will sometimes miss a good trade? Because I was in a long for seven ticks, and I'm probably going to miss a 25 tick trade or better. Everybody see why? Now here's your lightning two. If I was to take that, that's fairly risky because my bottom's right down here. We'll try it just for the fun of it. If it breaks power meter three, it should if that bar closes. Yeah, we got it after all. And we I couldn't move my target quick enough. But everybody see where that, that trade was, right where I said it would be? That's the beauty of trading this, okay? And these predictors. Notice how actually the predictor was better than I was. I drew my line too high, didn't I? because the swing was right here, and predictor said, nope, Gary, your predictor's right here at 63, and what did it hit? It hit 63. Okay, now, what if you actually missed this trade? He thought, well, doggone it, you know, I just missed a pretty decent trade. Well, guess what? you got to wait for another one to, to show up. Okay, let's, let's see if we can get another one. I'll fast forward this a little bit. That's a pretty good little drop, huh? Okay. Now, always be thinking in your mind, too, what would it take, and this was after the room closed right here, what would it take for this to change trends if something were to happen? Because I see that a lot after we close the room. Anybody? 
I'll move the lines and you tell me where they would be. Takes out 63. That's exactly right. Isn't that correct, everyone? What do you think? If YM takes out 63 to the upside, then more than likely you would have your decent trade. But don't take a breakout trade. Okay? Now, right now we're looking still for a short, but here's what you got to do on your chart. Draw your swing. It can't take out 64. Okay? If we get a predictor at mid-band, we'll give it a try. One thing that's, that's so far turning me off on this trade a little bit is it's barely taking out these swings across here. And that's usually when things change a little bit. Plus, it came down pretty much on top of that swing right there. See where you had your thrust, your retrace, your big thrust up? So I would almost think we'll, be, we'll get some kind of a bounce even. But we'll see. We'll take it anyway, though, because you know we, we don't know what it's going to do. That's just what I'm thinking it might do. Watch these charts a hundred thousand times. So I'm looking for a trade right here. We'll go ahead and just do three, and we'll wait for a predictor to show up. Predictor hadn't printed yet. Look to the left to trade the right. 57, that's mid-band, that's also swings across there. You've also got a swing across here at 49. That's what I consider your micro. See, in other words, you wouldn't have much of a trade if it did roll over. So I'd like a, your, your best trade is mid-band or higher, or at least getting close to mid-band. See if we can get something. Could be doing a little double bottom, actually. You want to try one just in case? Power meter turns green. See if we can get seven. Power meter just went green. My predictor's right there, so I'm going to fade it just a little bit. That's six ticks. And by the way, that's a little risky trade. Anytime you trade against the trend, you're taking a risk, okay? Because the true trend on that chart is still to the downside. And where did we say that it would take to take it back to the upside? It would have to break 64, right? Okay. Now, I'm feeling some heat on this. What do you think? There's a, There's the... Thrust retrace, that's a higher low so far. We may get taken out. If we do, we do. We made the, we made the decision to take it, so we're stuck. Higher low so far, hopefully. And there's your meter again. I'm going to protect this trade, though, like third candle back, just in case. Yeah, that's all right. Okay. See why you, you want to be careful with even that? Because that's considered a breakout trade. Okay, so where's our trade on this chart now? Predictor's right there. Mid-band's right there. Our high swing is right here. We can't take it out if we're going to head down. So we're looking for a short trade right at mid-band, right? Or that bottom line. And we'll see if we can get something. There's my mid-band, or my predictor. Now, I've only got one set of contracts, so I better put it at the swing. See the swing right there? That would be your target. Thrust, retrace, thrust, that's your target. Right on top of that swing. Didn't get it yet. Are we going to get it? Maybe not. Didn't get it. Not yet, anyway. There we got it. 
All right. Now see why I did that? Because I only had one set of contracts. So I only have one target. If I would have had all three of these turned on, I would have had seven, eight, and 15. But since I didn't do that, that's what you would want to do. You want to just, just like I draw the lines in the room, that would be like a scalp trade because I forgot to turn the other two on. Okay, let's fast forward this. I don't even know what it did this afternoon, but let's let's just see something. Starting to break, not quite. Now, let me ask a question. Is this breaking to the upside? You got a low, a high, a higher low, higher high, higher low, right? And what did it take out? Medium trend. So are we looking at phantom on this trade? Well, you could, obviously, still look at the phantom, but you want to be careful with it when it takes out medium trend. I watch that really close because I'm, I'm going to tell you where I think the trade will set itself up. And we're going to find out. We're going to, we need to thrust up higher. Now, you could go ahead and try a chance of a bar close and see if you could get seven ticks, you know, just in case. But you'd have to put your stop under here, right? Remember, this is chase, chasing a trade. Let's see if it works just for the fun of it. We lost on about three trades already, though, by being more aggressive. Seven ticks. There we go. We're in. And I have to put our stop right under here. Thrust, retrace. We need to take out that swing, too. But what's the smarter trade on this chart? What does everybody think? What, what did it break above? It broke above 63, right? Uh, Tom, on your question, really the rules on a predictor is just uh, what we were talking about. If, if you see a swing, for instance, and predictor is right at that swing, you know, that, that's a really good, in my opinion, a good predictor. And usually as a rule they are anyway because that's what they're looking at is those swings. They're looking at the algorithms as the bars change and all that, but they're, they're looking at the swings. That's the way it's designed. Okay. Now, notice we haven't gotten our target yet. Let's just fast forward it and see if we get it or get stopped out. There we go. Maybe. Maybe. There we go. Got it. All right. Where's our next trade on this chart, though? Anybody? Watch the predictor and watch and see if it doesn't print right in through there. So I know where it's going to, well, obviously, we, we designed it, so we know where it's going to print. But watch and see if it doesn't hit right where we think it's going to. And you want to take it the, what I call the conservative way. We lost on three aggressive, so conservative might not be a bad idea. We'll wait for power meter to turn green after it hits 63. Thrust, retrace back into support, won't it? Got a mid band that you haven't had yet either, right? Let's see if we get something. And then this will probably be about it for the webinar because just about through. I'm going to do, there's your predictor right there. Everybody see it? That's a high, a low, a higher high. You expect a higher low, don't you? But that's only an A, isn't it? So you want to see if we can get an A, B, C? Let's do it. That's your A. See that all bars came down now. Usually when it hits 63, I'd be going like this. I'd at least be going, but we're not going to. We're going to wait for the power meter. Everybody see why I would hit the button, though? I mean, that's a no-brainer trade, in my opinion. And so you could have five uh, ticks on four contracts, and that's $200. See what I mean? It can be quick money. But let's do it the smart way, and we'll wait for that power meter to turn green. Now, right now, where would the power meter turn green at? All the way up here. But keep in mind that it's not going to go all the way up there before it changes. It's going to do a thrust. You're trying to do a candle down. And if it does, then we're going to start lightning forming. 
And like I say, this will be the last trade. We'll see if we can get it. And I'm going to do it the conservative way. We'll do four, and we're going to do all of our targets. What does everybody think about stair-stepping and watching these ABCs? See, so far that's just an A. It's trying to go back up, though, isn't it? So that may be a B. So where would it go? It should go right up there. Right there, that's resistance. There's your A, your B, and let's see if we can get a C. Now you think power meter won't possibly change? You got a low, you got a high, you got a higher low. Power meter, you gonna change for me? We'll wait for it to change. That is lightning, by the way. Low, high, higher, low, higher, high. You are starting to lightning back up. But we'll wait. We'll do it the conservative way. Great and clear instructions. That's what that's what I want in my webinars too, because you know, there's a lot of people that very possibly uh if they don't know how to trade this in the morning, you know, wasn't it better waiting on that trade than, than all this choppy junk? That's why I'm not real fond of uh breakout type trades unless you've already done your thrust, you're stair stepping and you we're gonna watch for a power meter to change. And I'll buy it if it does. Got to close. Close above that line. We'll, we'll nail it because that will change our power meter. Everybody see why I'd already be in it, though? We I called 63 out. So did a bunch of you. So like I say, this is a more conservative trade, but your stop's going to still have to be where mine is. To begin with, if I got in at 63, and you'll just stair step up watching lightning, that's if we get the trade. But we're expecting it, aren't we? If it goes deeper, it's going to be a thrust, retrace, and still head down. So that would be a larger ABC. There we go. We're starting there. That's going to be a little later than I like, but I'll take it anyway. Get our targets out of the way and see if we can just ride some trade here. See why I don't like that one as much on that? Because it had to break above here for that to change. And you can clearly see it if you look at identified lightning. Let me, let me show you what identified lightning looks like. You had a high, you had a low, you had a higher high, only wicked. So it doesn't count, right? That low didn't count. So then you had a low, you had a high, you had a higher low, and it didn't take it out. When it finally identified a swing, which is right there now, see there? And it looks like we're good to go. Now we're going to get a swing right here. Maybe. Well, that's pretty good. It closed above the swing. I'll go ahead and at least put it just under there, just in case. If we get a double top, we just get a double top. That's all there is to it. Okay? So what does everybody think of stair-step trading on the right side of the trend? And watch those mid-bands. You know, when, like I said this morning, when this was all choppy right back in here, Okay, what did we have before we ever opened the room? I'm going to close this out. We don't care about the trade anymore. Let me just show you some things. When when you walked into the room this morning, basically you had a swing that was way up here. That's your medium swing. You had another swing that was way down here, right? Before we ever opened the room. And then this is what happened right about the time we opened the room. 
That predictor, by the way, would have rolled over right there on that bar. Or even on a one, two, three, you would have still gotten that trade. Okay? Rather than taking some dumb breakout trade to the upside, because what color was the midband? And what did the trade do? Well, if you would have gotten in right at predictor, you probably wouldn't have gotten stopped out. If you would have done it more on where this changed directions, you would have actually gotten in the trade. It would have been going up, going up, then thrust down A, right? A, B, C. When it took out C right across there, that could have been your trade and you got a 10 tick trade. Now that's your conservative trade. Okay, your aggressive trade was when it popped up above mid band and rolled over. And I'm pretty sure uh, there was even a long call there with a box. I didn't like that particular trade. There's another one right there, predictor, came right into resistance. Got you a 10 tick trade at least, right? Looking for a target right down there. Bingo, see there? And then look for another predictor. Did it hit that predictor? The answer is no. So did you take a trade yet? So you had one, two trades. You look for a predictor, hit that predictor, didn't it? That's right at resistance. Wait for it to do the little ABC. There's your A, your B, and there's your C. Just took that out, and when that changed, that bar went short, okay? And you took the trade, okay? That's a conservative trade. Now, we like this phantom trade anyway, and I would fire that trade in a heartbeat at this predictor and not wait for it to take out that swing. Okay, because a phantom trade is a pretty good trade to begin with. And, and what was the rule of thumb? You stay with the color of the mid band. Okay, especially when you walk in the room and it's, it's literally just you draw your lines and you've been in a range. Okay, now does that mean that you couldn't box these in and take these quick little scalps? Well, obviously, let's say for instance at 830. You were watching the clock, and, and 8.30 is when this happened. So you had an A, B, you got a little swing right across there, box it in, you got your little trade. Short, right? Okay, you watch it, it breaks above this box, that turns green, you could have fired along. Keep it in mind, though, that I don't like to do that because this could have easily just hit its head and rolled over again. The best way is to wait on these predictors. Predictor, predictor, predictor. See it? And then we already talked about where it would change trends. Took out 63, came back and kissed it exactly, and off it went. Okay. All right. Thanks, everyone, for coming. Hope you enjoyed it. We're going to trade again tomorrow. There is some news tomorrow, and, of course, we've got oil inventory tomorrow, too. So that will show you tonight basically a really aggressive way to trade and also a little bit more conservative way to trade. But also keep in mind that you don't have to do these little boxes because, you know, if that box is still, for instance, heading down and you box it in and it hasn't taken out the previous swing, you're still heading down. You know, in other words, you want to watch the stair-stepping of what's going on. Okay, if it's stair-stepping up, then obviously you're looking for longs. And that's why these indicators change. All right, see everybody in the morning. Thanks for coming, and I'll also get Charles's webinar posted. I forgot that today. Bye, everyone. Thanks.